Walking near Rockcliffe Park, Aviation Parkway, beautiful day. Yes, it's a little overcast, a little bit rainy, but uh, the Lord is providing for all the plants, and it's uh, wonderful. It also causes less people to be out, so yeah, it's good. Raining or not, we like to exercise and walk out. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Encouragement in the Way of the Lord. And this week we will be talking about anger. Do you get angry sometimes? I do. Fortunately the Lord has worked with me on that and I am way better than I was when I was in my youth. And so, um, you know, the Lord worked in my heart, worked in my life, and I think the points we're probably going to talk about are definitely good to know so yeah yeah yes me too the Lord worked into my heart as well and this is what we will share with you today and, and before I'd like to start with what one of a believer told me uh, one day and it really touched my heart and I still remember that today and she says and I'll quote it Emily never let yourself be angry because anger gets rooted in your heart you justify it in your heart, it becomes bigger, and then it takes years to remove the beachhead that was implanted by the devil. So that really talked to me and, and started to think about what is anger. And sometimes anger does not just come out uh, on the outside. It can be in our heart, and then eventually it comes out in our actions. And most of the time, we don't invite anger. It just pops his ugly head. And here we are having this anger in our heart. We try to justify ourselves why we're angry. We have all the reasons in the, heart, in the world to be anger. But really, it does not do us any good. Nope. Yeah, when you, you know, going to your friend's quote, you know, a beachhead's a military term when you... You know, probably one of the most famous beachheads in history was the Normandy invasion in World War II and how critical that was to the overall success of the Allies' military operation. And the last thing we want is for anger to have success against our defenses. And so by not letting anger get that beachhead, getting established, getting their forces into ourselves, then you know, by, if we are able to keep that from happening, we are much better off and the Lord can help us in that endeavor. Exactly. So before we get into how, we, how to deal with anger, let's look uh, at how a Christian's attitude should be towards anger. It talks, uh, there's many verses about that, but let's look at two things here. First, to be we need to be slow to anger. And let's look at um, uh, Proverbs 14, verses 17a. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. So going back to our point of being slow to anger, you know, if you get angry quickly, it's, or even just get angry, period, it's very easy to do something stupid, do something that you regret. Uh, too many times you hear people say, 
uh, as an excuse, you know, I just blew up and all sorts of bad things stem from that one incident. So being slow to anger, to stop, to think, to discuss, uh, to ask like the person that you might be angry at, hey, what did you mean by saying that thing? Uh, because maybe you heard it wrong. Maybe you didn't hear the rest of the sentence. And so taking a second to find out what's actually going on uh, can often solve the problem. But yes, that's a good point. And then let's look at uh, James uh, chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Uh, here again, it says to be slow. And uh, now another thing that it's, it says to be for a Christian's attitude is to put away anger. So let's look at uh, Ephesians 4, verse 30 and 31. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Exactly. Be put away. And now let's look at James chapter 1, verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Exactly. So when we have the anger in our heart, we cannot work out the righteousness of God. It doesn't go together. They're both opposite. Um, and then last one for put away anger would be Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Yes, bitterness in our heart will trouble us uh, and will get us into trouble if we don't deal with it right away. So how can we deal with anger? There's two points that we want to share with you. Uh, those are the points where when it pops up uh, with all this experience um, of being a believer, usually I usually do those two things and this is, this is what uh, really helps me. So I'd like to share it with you. So number one is we must run to the Lord Jesus. We must go to Him in prayer. And oftentimes, what we are inclined to do is just to retire ourselves, go um, separate ourselves, and just meditate on that anger that we have in our heart, what that person did or, or, or whatsoever. And as we meditate on that, it just grows. And then we have all the reasons in the world to be angry. And when that person or that situation comes, we are ready to you know, explode, so to speak, <laughs> to a certain extent. But really, it shows us differently. That does not do much, right? You think you have all the reasons, but there are, there's going to be no reasons to be angry with them. And as Christ tells us and shows us, you know, yeah, there's, there's another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shows us really when we go to the Lord, it shows us our heart, how we are really and how we are self-centered. We are selfish at this point. Um, and then it starts to, to, to show us how we are. And then we can see what the Bible says, where it says, think of the other, the other better than yourself. And uh, it changes our attitude uh, most of the time. And uh, so a little trick, if I can tell you, when I cannot um, separate myself to go in a quiet place to pray, what I will do, I will run to the Lord in prayer in my heart and I will say what uh, David said in uh, Psalm 51 where he says, uh, renew a right spirit within me, Lord. And I will repeat that in my head until I either don't remember what happened or that my heart is finally uh, softened and, uh, and at peace again. And that's my little trick that I have. Number two would be to open your Bible and read the promises of God. Yes, read the promises until your heart gets softened again and full with love. And, um, 
And remember that our living God is our all in all. He's able to save us from sin and anger is part of those sins. So we must go to him. As we can see, our all in all is written in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Here, you know, we're talking about the Lord is able to do more than we would ask of him. You know, he being God, he has the capability to do anything and everything. And fortunately, uh, he's usually going to do something that we don't ask of him because he knows better for us than we know ourselves. So in that time of anger, we can be asking for him to solve our problem and he will listen to that prayer and he will have a solution that is beyond anything we could have thought of. And we are so blessed as a result of that. We are so thankful that he is without limits uh, in his grace and his love for us. That's a very good point. And sometimes I can believe that we go through difficult situation where we do have all the reasons in the world to be angry you know that other person really sin against the lord and against us and it's very difficult but at the same time we can control our anger um, but we cannot control the other person so if that other person did something really that was um that was really something that really affected you, then again, run to the Lord. He will show you how to forgive. Uh, because if we have an anger, if we, we have hatred in our hearts against someone, um, the Bible says it's like as if we would have killed that person, really. Mm. And uh, it's really serious. And that separates us from, um, from the Lord's... Um, presence when we have uh, ang anger towards somebody. Um, so yes, the Lord is our all in all to be able to overcome that. And when you, you look at the example Christ set for us, you know, we think somebody's doing us wrong when they say something bad about us, when they maybe uh, physically hurt us in some way. But just remember that when Christ was on the cross, mm -hmm. they had crucified him wrongly of the crimes that they had accused him of and he's up there and he said you know forgive them lord they know not what they do you know he did not hold anger in his heart against them and he asked for god to pour his grace down upon those who had committed this uh, heinous act against him mm -hmm. that's a very good point okay so as we close we will give you a uh, scripture which is isaiah 43 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Mm. Yes, so as a believer, we will go through difficult situations. But as he says, he will be with us and he will help us and keep us in those situations and the only thing that we have to do is to turn towards him and say lord don't let me go i have to go through this with you i can't do it alone so this is all for us for this week friends and until next time we pray blessing over you and yours and remember to be a shining light. Until next time. We'll see you then. God bless.